Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wind Down Friday. Today, our guest is uh, Frank uh, Hedman, a leader of uh, SET at uh, NI, National Instruments. Hi, Frank. How is it going? Hi, good morning. Thank you for having me. Thanks a lot for for coming uh, to Wind Down. So, Frank, you uh, we did a podcast uh, last time talking about uh, several uh, uh, technology about about power. You are a VP and technology leader of uh, SET at uh, NI, uh, now part of uh, Emerson, NI, National Instruments. So uh, you founded with your colleague the company in uh, 2001, I guess. 2001, so please, yeah. Yeah, please correct me. So in, a, in a, an apartment, as you, you wrote in, in a blog, without central heating. So can you share some uh, insights in uh, your journey oh, yeah. with the company, how you navigated into challenging times? Yeah, um, yeah, thank you. That's, that's a wonderful question. It's a wonderful story. We founded the company 1st of September 2001, and the idea of the company was to build avionics. We Both of us were avionic engineers. We came from big avionic companies, and we thought we can do better than that. So we founded the company, and the, the plan was really to yeah, do new avionic technologies. And uh, the market was great. And mm -hmm. new new aircrafts everywhere, new companies, and I was really good. And then 9-11 happened, actually. 11 days later, after we, we founded the company, and the market basically disappeared. It was like, yeah, from, from 100 to nothing, basically, right? So actually, it's true. We were in, a, in an apartment. We didn't have central heating. We had to carry oil every day. <laughs> And uh, we had big dreams. That was so funny. We, we decided in a very early stage that we need to move out of that flat because when we invite Airbus to us, we cannot invite them into, you know, completely crazy ideas. But actually, a couple of years later, we invited Airbus. They came and we did good business with them over a long time. So, yeah, we started a company from two with two people. You know, like a, like a standard story everybody talks about. We started a company in basically in the, in, the, in the basement apartment with nothing. And now we're ending up with, yeah, SET won 150 people um, right now and, and AVL SET, which is um, Hammer's company now, another three, uh, 150 people. So actually from, from zero to 300 people employed today and now we are part of NI and now we are part of Emerson. Good. So um, a bright future in front of us. It's a long journey, but it was a lot of fun. Great, great, good. So breakthrough technologies can be fascinating, in particular for aerospace. Tell us, oh, yeah. uh, so if uh, uh, is there a recent technological development that uh, has uh, has particularly impressed you or that you find exciting? Well, the, the aerospace industry goes through a complete transition right now right from very old technologies and i mean anything what we're doing in the aerospace world is about proving safety this yeah. is the main and uh, main thing and it's very manual to make sure no no failures are happening and now there is this digital world with all <clears throat> this ai coming with all more electrical aircraft electrical airplanes flying we need to reduce co2 emissions this is a huge huge change in the industry but particularly i think the biggest thing what I'm kind of afraid and then fascinating at the same time is how do we adapt um, AI to all our development processes and still make sure that our safety approaches yeah. and safety processes work and then being able to adapt to the electrical world you know make electrical transportation even in the aerospace world possible I think these two these two things are the most challenging one but really exciting ones right now and it's all about automation automation how can we adapt and develop faster in the market um, and, and be able to automate our processes, but still are reliable and safety outputs at the end. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a wild ride right now. So one topic that I like uh, writing, uh, but is also um, a strong topic in uh, several blogs is uh, climate change. Uh, <laughs> so it's a, it's a good topic. So what do you think? What about climate change? But in particular, how does power electronics support the achievement of this goal? Wow, this is my this is this is something I really struggle myself with, because when we when we look into the world, like twenty percent of all the CO two emissions are produced by cars and transportation, yep. thirty seven percent of all the CO two emissions are produced by energy generating, and this is all power electronics. So we power electronics is the only way to 
change the climate, totally uh, our climate crisis. And actually the world doesn't appreciate it right. Um, I think when we just think about our daily life, we charging phones and all our battery different devices. And if we only with power electronics say 5% of the energy by efficiency uh, increasement, we will, we will save billions of tons of CO2. Electrical cars will save billions of tons of CO2. And this is, is all power electronics, like solar energy, wind energy. Without power electronics, there's nothing like this. So there's, there's the, the only question is, do we have a climate crisis or do we have power electronics? Because if we don't have power electronics, we burn the stuff. This is the only alternative. And, and actually the world doesn't appreciate it. So the most green technology in the world is power electronics. And we need to shout it out to the world. Power electronics is the solution, nothing else. What I'm trying to to do in this uh, in this year. Yes, please. Yeah, and you do <laughs> you do a great job. I I really appreciate so, it. That's true. Apart from from your job, Frank. Yes. Which are your hobbies? Which are Frank's hobbies? I know that you like dogs, uh, fast cars, hopping uh, Ferrari, <laughs> biking, uh, and exploring uh, Europe in your camper. Tell me more. Wow, you did a good job. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, actually, we 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 recover the dog from a from a shelter and give him life um, to make sure he can survive. And now he's he is the he is the middle of the family. Actually, to be honest, he took the family over. He's under control of the family now to, in total. So this is uh, both. It's a it's a it's a big duty and it's so much fun. So I really love dogs and I'm I'm very heavily involved in in teaching dogs and training dogs. Um, this is a, really a, a hobby which is which gives so much fun. And you, nice. you're right. I, I love fast cars. So drifting is is something I really love. Um, driving on a on a on a race course is I really love it. Right now, it's all about combustion engines. I'm I'm really sorry, but I did my first experience uh, to get a good drift on an electrical EV car from Korea. That did really well. So mm -hmm. I see my future also in electrical cars because um, it's not only that we save CO2, it's it's also fun, right? So driving fast electric cars, it's a lot of fun. And um, the acceleration is so crazy. It's so much better than in, in a combustion car. And then, yeah, um, we're traveling around Europe. Um, this is kind of the opposite of the business life, like traveling around the world uh, from one um, conference to another and helping young engineers to understand the power electronics. You need some recovery time, and this is our camper van because it's it's for me, it's pure freedom. Um, there's no there's no time schedule for breakfast or there's no time schedule for dinner. You can do whatever you want and you can go to wherever you want. And my wife is Italian. I'm not sure if you know that, so she's from the northern part of Italy, Alto Adige. So we mm -hmm. have always a point to start from, right? Where because there's family, so we have 350 kilometers. Yeah. Then there's family, and then. Uh, we go off into the world and enjoy food and wine and and culture and different countries. So yeah, that's that's my big hobby. Good. So exploring Europe uh, uh, must have exposed you to various cultures, food, oh, yes. wine. Just to stay on on the topic. So is there a particular European dish uh, that you is your favorite one or? specific place uh, where you enjoyed uh, trying uh, local uh, food or wine so if we have one hour i can give you a ride through europe and food and wine but we don't have that um yeah a, a couple of very interesting ones so one is sluch sluch which is a, a it's a it's a noodle dish from alto adici from Südtirol, which Thanks. is amazing very basic um and, and really honest honest food i love it a lot um I had my best pulpo ever in Sicily. Uh, that was amazing. I'm I'm a big wine lover, as you know, and maybe yes, middle of French when we talk about the Rhone, the, the river okay. of Rhone, um, they make amazing Syrahs. Uh, it's amazing wine. Or oh, the the big Tuscanies. Oh, I love the big Tuscanies, right? Like uh, Sassicaia, Onelaya from Bulgari. Bulgari is a big, big topic right now in the wine world. It's coming. It's a little village actually, right? It came out of nothing. Sassicaia was a, was a was wasn't planned to have Sassicaia on the market, but now it's such a big success. Onelaya is a unbelievable good winemaker. So yeah, I'm I'm in love with wine. And oh, we shouldn't we shouldn't forget Scotland. Scotland is my my second home because I'm studying in Scotland and. If you've never been in the Highlands, uh, you are not allowed to die. So, yeah, 
the Highlands and the Scots whiskey, that's that's another one. So that's an amazing area. Good. And amazing wow. people. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, Frank, in conclusion, what's next on your list in terms of uh, adventures, in terms of goals, oh. <laughs> whether it's related to your interest or personal aspirations? Well, so first of all, obviously, right, we make power semiconductor and power electronics big. We need to shout out to the world. We need to explain to young people uh, how important power electronics is because um, they all see the fancy things on the web and on, on software and, you know, all that stuff, but they don't yeah. see how important it is to have the power electronics to save our world. I think that is really my mission. And I'm traveling around the world on each and any conference. I can go and help young engineers to understand power electronics. But my big dream was in the very early days, I wanted to be a medical doctor. So I think this one is gone. I'm not diving into that one again. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, um, helping dogs um, and training dogs is a private thing, which I really like. Um, I like to be on keynotes and, and stages. So one, one, the next big aim is really to perfect my keynote speaking and get 7000 people in the room and have Good. a keynote there so this is this is really on my bucket list i will i will get that there um i will like to yeah make my drift capabilities better and get my fast lap and i think that's a that's another one and yeah and then really enjoy the fruits and life what we have and see the world um yeah getting better a little bit and helping to make the world better every day a little bit yeah great job thanks a lot Frank, congratulations for your achievements and uh, have a nice weekend. See you next. Thank, Thank you, you so much. And uh, now we start having the wine, man. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend. Thanks a lot for joining at Wendell. Thank you.